Thank you, Dr. Choquet. Dr. Brown, your five-minute opening statement, sir. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to be here tonight. I welcome this uh, very much because we have a legitimate representative tonight of what calls itself authentic Judaism, which I will demonstrate to you begs the question and assumes what it wants to prove. It's been 23 years now that I have been actively following Jesus, Yeshua, as the Messiah of Israel and the nations. And I was told over and over and over for years by rabbis, by Jewish scholars, you only believe what you believe because you're ignorant. You only believe what you believe because there's no substance to it. I've been challenged over and over and over again. What is the evidence for this? Where is the proof? You have none. And I've offered for years, if I have none, then what do you have to fear by de discussing things openly? So this is an opportunity for me to say, hear this man very carefully. Listen to what he has to say. Listen to what I have to say very carefully. Review our words and see where the truth actually lies. I would warn you to beware of sweeping, bombastic statements by either side that prove nothing. Some of which, in fact, I have already heard, namely that I and all other Jewish believers in Jesus here actually know the truth is against us. I would propose that tonight you'll see where the truth really does, in fact, lie. I personally heard on a videotape a challenge from Rabbi Shochet that he could not find anyone willing to debate him with a panel guaranteeing that there would be logical discussion and deduction and that he would even do it on live television. So I'm very happy to answer that challenge. And by the way, historically, the very first debates, according to Christian recording, we were told that we could check the record, say that the Messianic Jews decisively refuted their rabbinic opponents, according to Acts 18.28. Uh, not only so, I've been involved in uh, many debates. We were just told that no time ever has the rabbinic side ever lost. I'd encourage you to check and see. Check the records, look, look at recent debates, and see. Now, this is going to be my approach tonight. Uh, I will first seek to demonstrate from the Hebrew Scriptures that Jesus is the prophesied Messiah, explain why it was that he had to come, 2,000 years ago, according to the scriptures, why he was to be rejected by his people, why he was to suffer and lay down his life as an atonement for the sins of the world, why he was to rise from the dead and be a light to the nations before his own people Israel would fully receive him, at which time he would then return and establish his kingdom on the earth. I will seek to demonstrate that from the Hebrew Bible. I was told many times as a new believer in Jesus, that the New Testament authors shot an arrow and then they drew a bullseye around the arrow and said, look, Jesus hit the bullseye. He fulfilled the prophecies when in fact he fulfilled none. Quite to the contrary, I will seek to demonstrate that he hit the bullseye perfectly and then later Judaism moved the target and said he fulfilled nothing. I'll do my best time permitting to refute all of the objections raised to Messianic prophecy by Rabbi Shochet. What I will seek to demonstrate is that there is no actual substance in any of the arguments. So if I'm unable to get to every single one of them, what I hope to prove is that each one raised has the full value of zero. So that zero plus zero plus zero times a million still equals zero. I will use rabbinic literature for two reasons. One, if I give you an interpretation of the Hebrew Bible and you say that's far-fetched, that's crazy, that's a later Christian view, if I can show you that this was also common in rabbinic circles, even among the rabbis, most all of whom rejected Jesus, then I can say this is not just some newfangled Christian view, but this is actually recognized as a legitimate reading of the text. As to the question of can a Jew believe in the New Testament and be true to historic Judaism, I will seek to demonstrate that it is the religion of the Talmud that is not faithful to the Bible. And thus, I will seek to demonstrate the spirit and essence of rabbinic Judaism, and you can judge for yourselves whether it follows. I have actually seen much fruit from debates because people get provoked to study more, to think more, to search more, to sift more. I'm not expecting in a few minutes to change someone's life course, although anything is possible. What I'm expecting is to provoke you to think, to study, to research, 
to open up your heart, to ask God to get into the scriptures. Having done that, I trust that this will produce much lasting fruit. Thank you, Dr. Brown.